So recently I've been doing some research, tapping away on my computer, performing hard work and intensely searching, studying this little underground indie game called uh, Bellout New Vegas. I've been pondering what is some of the best in slot gear in this stat based RPG. For this endeavor, I'm going to be exploring and analyzing the guns in New Vegas. Not all guns, the guns guns, for this video. The other guns is probably for another video. As a note for this video, we're going to be judging weapons based on generalized builds, most of which in New Vegas tend to cover all guns anyhow, with the exceptions of taking perks like uh, and stay back for a dedicated shotgun build, because with specific builds, you can essentially make a specific gun or type of gun much better than it is normally. I want to look at the guns kind of in a vacuum without having to revolve the playthrough around it. Also, I think it goes without saying that we're going to be analyzing the weapons I go over based on their ability to perform in very hard rather than the Mickey Mouse difficulties. I'm going to be judging the best guns by traits based on their acquisition in the time in your playthrough, so we're going to look at the best guns for the early game, mid game, and late game, and then just a generalized overview of which one I think is the best, and I'm always correct, so it means that my assessment is objectively the truth. Also, before we start looking at specific guns, let's talk about what we're searching for with guns in general. And this upcoming sentiment extends to not just guns, but all weapons in New Vegas. So the key to killing power in New Vegas is crit, a dynamic that increases in importance exponentially as the run continues. In the early game, crit doesn't really matter that much because it's hard to generate it outside of the best early boosts in high luck, uh, lucky shades, first recon beret, and finesse. The ultimate builds in New Vegas revolve around how well you can use and generate crit, so that's important to consider when assessing weapons. Unfortunately, early game weapons are rather bad at utilizing crit because they just don't have the damage and you don't have the perks and skill points to really maximize the effectiveness. So for the most part, early game guns that bear traits like high DPS and easy ammo retrieval are key. All right, let's get the ball rolling with the early game. The prominent traits we're looking for in an early game weapon is accessibility, ammo consumption, and acquisition, as well as the ability to clear early game content. Let's start with early pistols. What are we looking at here? Well, the staple early pistol is that gun, one of the easiest uniques to obtain in the game, gotten fairly early in Novak. That gun is a pretty freaking solid choice. What does it have going for it? The base damage is upper to middle level of pistols with 30, which is pretty good, and a very desirable crit multiplier of 2.5, which is extremely high for just weapons in general in New Vegas across the board. It uses one of the easiest ammo types to access, which is 5.56, and in general is just a good starter weapon. What are the downsides? Well, it doesn't scale that well into the late game. You use it for the first 10 to 15 levels, if that, and it gets eclipsed pretty fast. The biggest drawback is its rate of fire, ammunition in the cylinder, and reload speed. It doesn't shoot very quickly at all, with a 3.0 rate of fire, meaning 3 shots per second, and the reload is lengthy at 2.5 seconds, meaning that you'll empty your cylinder in 1.66 seconds, followed by a 2.5 second reload. Overall, just very slow when you compare it to later pistols, like a light shining in darkness. In the early game, this gun is going to be your older reliable that you fall back on when you run out of ammo for other weapons or just something that you use in general because the ammunition is plentiful. The other good early game pistol I want to talk about is Lucky, which is obtained from the hard safe in the Bison Seaf Hotel in Prim. The reason why I deem Lucky as an early game gun instead of a mid game gun due to its hard lock is that I believe pathing in New Vegas should revolve around skill books. Specifically lockpick skill books that keep you out of a lot of content so you get earlier access to areas and loot. With comprehension, all you need is to open with lockpick tagged, decent pathing, and solid intelligence, and with locksmith reader, you'll have access to Lucky around level 10 or so, maybe earlier, maybe a little bit later. So why is Lucky a great early game weapon? Well, 357 ammo is actually pretty common in the grand scheme of things, so you really don't have to worry about consumption, and overall the gun is just very solid around the board. The only big drawback is the reload time, but with hot key swaps, or even high agility or rapid reload, you can get around this fact. What are the best aspects of the gun? Well, it shoots pretty fast at 2.9 shots a second, meaning you'll get through all six bullets in about two seconds. Additionally, its accessibility, as previously mentioned, is great in an early location. Only requiring 75 lockpick makes it so that you can always get this gun early. However, the previous two traits aren't the best part of it. The best part is its potential. Lucky has a lot going for it where it can really become a staple of your kit. It already has a really high critical chance at 2.5, the same as that gun, meaning that it crits often and can benefit from strong early game perks like better criticals more advantageously. It also benefits from another strong early game perk in Cowboy, so you can boost its effectiveness without investing in the gun skill. However, this is a point that needs to be made about both that gun and Lucky being that they both benefit from Cowboy. Statistically, both of these weapons are actually extremely close to one another when you compare them, even having the same base of damage of 30. The biggest difference coming from the rate of fire, reload times, and type of ammunition use. It really depends on if you prioritize ROF, reload speed, obtainability, and which you have more ammo for when you look to choose Lucky or that gun. Now let's look at early rifles, starting with this machine. 
obtained it really easily by hacking an average terminal in Kamikaren and having the evidence on that terminal turned into Lieutenant Boyd, this machine is a high damage unique battle rifle. Immediately, you'll realize that the biggest turnoff to this machine is its ammo type. 308 is not particularly easy to come by in the early game, and if you use a sniper rifle repeatedly, you'll probably find yourself running out of ammo quickly. However, if you do get your hand on 308, you'll be greeted with a 55 base damage weapon, which is in the upper echelon of rifles in the game. With a quick fire rate of 2 shots a second and a reload of 2 seconds, you'll get through 8 shots in this gun pretty quickly. I tend not to use it much because I personally just prefer to use other things. The ammo problem can be tackled well, not amazingly, with some decent padding. Cottonwood Cove and Helios 1 both have 308 lying around, and if you borrow with Contreras before turning in men, you can buy a fuck ton from them. For the early game, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the unique cowboy repeater, the Lung Carbine. The Lung? The Lung Carbine? I don't know. Wait, the Lung Carbine. Which you can get off Corporal Sterling. If you don't want to kill him, I'd recommend pickpocketing the ammo off his person, waiting enough time so that he unequips the weapon, then entering F5, F9 hell to try and get the gun off him. You can literally do this whenever, given the minimum pickpocket chance is 5%, it'll just require farming to do it successfully. So you get the gun in your hands, how good is it? Pretty fucking solid. It uses 357 ammo, which is common early, and has a solid base damage of 35. An unquantifiable aspect of the gun is that it feels really good to use. Minuscule kick when shooting ADS makes it a dream to fire. It shoots really fast at 2.2 shots a second, but has a lengthy reload at 3.3 seconds. It has a higher than average crit molt at 1.5, meaning that you'll trigger its crits more often, meaning it benefits better criticals, notably greater than other weapons. There's really no downside to using the carbine other than you may run out of ammo quickly if you don't find enough 357, and it's solid but not hard hitting damage numbers. 35 damage is good, but it falls off in the late game. For early SMGs, there really aren't any great ones, seeing as the 10mm SMG absolutely decimates your ammo count, and the 9mm SMG does the same but with piss poor damage. But I'll give an honorable mention to Vance's 9mm, because it can do some work against unarmored targets if you have the ammo to compensate. Similarly, I don't think there's any notable great early game shotguns or heavy weapons. This is mostly on account of just not having the ammo in hand to sustain using these weapons. And the ones that do have ammo in hand are pretty shit, like the Big Boomer because of its abhorrent range, and the Sturdy Caravan Shotgun just because of its kind of weakness as a whole. The Sturdy Caravan Shotgun isn't bad, but you'll realize when fighting people with guns, keeping your distance is key so you don't eat through your Stimpak supply. Alright, it's time to talk mid-game. For good guns in the mid-game, we're looking less for ease of access, and now we're just looking for raw stats. We're not worrying as much about how to get the item as much as we're worried about what the item actually is. The big difference between mid and late game weapons is actually specialized ammo. The access and use of things like hollow points, armor piercings, or hand load ammos to name it. We're going to be assessing using these weapons from the 15 to 30 level range, roughly. Let's start with the pistols. The first one I'm going to highlight is a light shining in darkness. I almost want to omit this from the mid game category entirely and just put it in the late game only because Honest Heart should be done last, but I think it just squeaks in. Light is an insanely good weapon that can last you for the rest of your playthrough. Shooting insanely quickly at 4.4 attacks a second with only a 1.7 second reload, this gun will get you far. Obtained from finishing Honest Hearts or killing Josh Graham, the only downside to Light is its small mag with 6 bullets. This is offset to a significant degree by the fast reload, meaning your damage uptime is actually pretty good despite the small mag size. It has a very respectable 33 base damage, a crit multiplier too, and benefits from the grunt perk for a really good stat line and potential all around. For another mid game pistol, I'm going to go ahead and throw in Little Devil, which you buy from Mick and Ralphs. By this point in the game, you should have a good amount of 12.7, especially if you bought from Contreras. With a great base damage of 45, crit molt of 2, and 3.3 attack a second, Little Devil can put in work. The biggest drawbacks to the gun are the difficulty in acquiring special ammo, and the fact that the special ammo pool for 12.7 guns does not have AP, which is a huge issue. A lot of heavily armored targets are just going to eat your bullets if you're not critting, and it's a huge problem. However, soft targets like creatures or unarmored dudes are going to get rolled by the hollow point, which does almost two times the amount of base damage at 1.75. Also, the gun is pretty fucking costly, usually requiring around 15k cash to buy, which is it's a fucking lot. For mid-game rifles, I only have my eye on one really strong choice, being Christine's COS sniper rifle. This should be your bread and butter in basically any New Vegas run. It comes silenced, which is a dream for stealth killing people and wonderful for farm killing. A huge 62 base damage and is even usable in actionable combat with a 2.5 crit mold. This gun absolutely rules. It's not going to carry you through every fight by any means, but it can deal with a lot of unassuming targets and has amazing utility. You pick it up in OWB at the Yangtze camp pretty effortlessly. You can get it within minutes of starting OWB. 308 also has great ammo options and hollow point and armor piercing, meaning you can deal with any type of enemy. 
When you pick it up, it should basically stay in your inventory until you hit the end screen. Honorable mention to the Gobi Campaign Rifle, but it really just isn't as strong as Christine's. Less damage, an annoying very hard lock to get access to, less crit multiplier and you can't silence it, basically just worse Christine's. Mid-game SMGs is a touchy one, because I feel like SMGs in general really just don't make the cut across the board. The only one I can confidently put up here at the moment is the 12.7 SMG, but only for the mid-game. It hits like a truck quickly with 36 base damage and 9 ROF, and can be upgraded, but you really struggle versus high-level armor targets. It'll kill them, just not quickly, and in New Vegas, the best defense is a good offense, so if you can take someone out speedily, you're doing great. As mentioned before, a big huge issue that 12.7 guns has is that there's no armor piercing variant, which is absolutely damning for automatic weapons against armor targets, since they basically cannot crit. For reference, the 12.7 SMG has a 0.08 critical multiplier, meaning that punching through things like death claws, it's gonna be a little rough. The mid game shotguns are largely the same as the late game shotguns, just late game, their effectiveness drops off somewhat. In general, shotguns in Vegas, I find to be fairly weak without shotgun surgeon and the right ammo, but under certain circumstances they can be tools of destruction or really good utility weapons. By utility, I mean stunning, and by stunning I mean loading beanbag ammo because beanbag ammo is not balanced at all. We're going to start off with Dinner Bell, obtained through a lengthy quest called Believe Me Drive with Red Lucy and the Thorn. Dinner Bell is a solid weapon. It has 75 base damage, shooting 7 pellets for 10.7 damage each. Man, in my experience, it feels like it just doesn't do enough, especially in the face of other weapons. The lengthy reload for a full clip being 2.5 seconds is just rough, especially when compared to the next weapon I'm about to list, which I'm sure some of you can imagine what's following after Dinner Bell. It's good, but suffers from the same issue that all other shotguns suffer from, where you have to get close to the target unless you're using slugs. On the bright side, there's a lot of options with 12 gauge. Magnum, coin shot, slug, and pulse slug are great under the right circumstances, and beanbag is essentially a dev tool. In my opinion, Dinner Bell will get the job done, but it won't be with the cleanest execution. Another benefit to not only Dinner Bell, but all shotguns is crit farming. Given that every pellet has a chance to crit, you're usually going to get at least one crit on a shot. But the problem is that the pellet damage is really low for Dinner Bell at 10 damage. So even if you crit, it's not going to clear the enemy. Dinner Bell's stronger big brother in the riot shotgun is a different matter altogether. Bearing less damage at 67, the riot shotgun is better in every other way if you ask me. It has a higher mag at 12 rounds, reloads the entire mag with a fast reload of 2.2 seconds, and empties the mag quickly with 4 shots a second. The quicker firing and reloading basically makes the riot shotgun just a better Dinner Bell and utilizes all of its strengths even better especially that of the arguable cheat that is beanbag ammo. If you use the riot shotgun as a fatigue generator, the game becomes mindlessly easy. It kills pretty quickly, but the crit farming is pretty atrocious, given each pellet only does 10 damage, so it's kind of unfortunate that the riot shotgun can't fully utilize the best New Vegas build in the crit build, but it can't have everything. A riot shotgun can be bought from the gunrunners at the level 16, but you can also sometimes find them on NCR veteran rangers. For heavy weapons, all of them? Seriously, all the heavy weapons in the mid game are no joke. A fully upgraded K9K has 28 base damage at a 10 fire rate with 357 ammo, meaning you can utilize the amazing JFP hand load, which does more damage, shreds DT, and has less spread. Bio similarly is also really strong with 36 base damage, but has a slower ROF. Both guns suffer from automatic weapon critical chance debuffs, so don't really worry about utilizing crits with these weapons. However, similar to the K9K, Bido has an amazing ammo type to use, seeing as it uses 44 ammo, and that is the SWC hand load, which also shreds DT and does extra damage. These guns won't carry, but they'll put in some work, and you can obtain both of them in OWB. Bido's schematic can be obtained from the XA Research Center and requires a guns of 75 and a K9K to craft. Note that if you upgrade a K9K to a Fido, it loses any mods, so don't get cute like me when I first started playing and thinking that you could upgrade your Fido if you max the K9K first. A fully upgraded minigun is good, but since the CZ57 Avenger is better in every way, we're just going to cover that. 13 base damage and an alarming 30 ROF means that this gun, by default, has 390 DPS. This gun will never crit because of its tragic 0.01 crit multiplier, so if you're avoiding crit for whatever reason, it will function largely the same as if you weren't. You can get it pretty easily from the Devil's Throat, you just gotta deal with some centaurs. 5mm ammo comes with various options, AP, HP, and the hand load are all great ammo types for various enemies. I used to be a minigun hater, but I've sort of been in a big weapon renaissance where I actually think that they're pretty good. 
The last and the weakest of the big guns is the SMMG, shoulder mounted machine gun. Not bad as a whole, but its mods are pretty shit. No damage or ROF increase is pretty sucky and its base stats aren't wonderful. It fires pretty slowly actually with the 7 ROF compared to the Avengers, which is literally over 4 times that amount. Its base damage, however, is considerably high at 30 damage, but has a literal 0x crit mod, meaning you will never crit with this weapon. The gun is located in Lonesome Road, and the one that you'll usually acquire is on Beast after you exit the underpass. It's got a quick reload time at 3 seconds, which is good for a heavy weapon compared to the Avengers, Fido's, and K9K's shared reload time of 4 seconds. Sadly, it suffers from the greatest curse of any automatic weapon, which is no armor piercing ammo type. It only has hollow point, so if you go against an armor target, swap to something else. You might get some mileage out of this weapon, but there's definitely better options. It just barely squeaks into being mentioned. If anything, it's an honorable mention. All right, let's finish up with what we're using for the late game. For pistols, light is still putting in work, but even more so now, because by this point, you should probably have hand loader if you want to take half the guns in the game, even remotely, seriously. 45 Super Handload is best in slot for damage with 1.3 damage mole and 4 damage threshold pen. With its high critical chance, you're going to be procking crits often, which is amplified by this damage and is amplified by your crit build. Amazing low weight weapon option. On the topic of guns benefiting greatly from hand loading, the Ranger Sequoia becomes viable in the late game. The reason you don't really get around to using the Sequoia until later is because of the ammo, which is an absolute pain in the ass to come across unless you're buying it in mass from Quartermaster Barden or the Great Khan Armory. Ranger Vets start spawning in at level 16, but you can pickpocket one off Chief Hanlon at any point. The Sequoia has the highest base damage of any pistol in the game at a staggering 62 with a 1.5 times crit multiplier. Now, referencing the handloading part I just spoke about, 4570 government handload is best in slot with 1.2 times damage multiplier and pierces 60T. With a good amount of handload ammo and a great critical build, the Sequoia will put up some massive numbers for you in the late game. For rifles, we're still rocking Christine Sniper, even though it doesn't have extreme killing power. It's still a great utility weapon and is useful in a lot of stealth-based scenarios. The other rifle I'm going to throw into the late game category is Medicine Stick, largely for the same reasons that the Sequoia becomes good in later levels. Medicine Stick uses the same ammo as the Sequoia, meaning you get value out of the handload government shots. It can be bought from the Vendortron, but has a base value of 20k, so yeah, good luck with that. The Medicine Stick has a ridiculous 78 base damage, meaning that crates do 156 by default. It doesn't have a critical multiplier, reloads fairly slowly at a 4 second reload, but the handload government ammo and 78, I repeat, 78 base damage is enough to still have it as a contender. Finally, for rifles, the anti-material rifle can be a beast under the right circumstances. I found that the AM rifle with explosive ammo puts in some fucking work, given that the explosive ammo adds an extra 80 damage on top of what you're already doing. What damage are you already doing? Well, the AM rifle has the highest base damage in the game of any gun at 110, meaning when you crit, you do 220, and when you crit with explosives, you're doing 300, 300 damage with a shot. The biggest drawback to the AM rifle is its slow rate of fire at 0.4 shots a second, meaning you're not pumping that damage out quickly but it's top three guns in the game for an opening shot to a fight or to take out enemies in one bullet. AM rifles can be bought all over, the most common place being gun runners when you're level 16. NCR vets also occasionally carry them around. I used to be a big AM rifle hater, but after just looking at the raw numbers, I kind of just came around on it and accepted that it's it, it's kind of a beast. Yeah, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of him. For late shotguns, they're going to be the same as before, but we're going to rule out dinner bell because by this point in the game, I think it just shoots and reloads too slow to compete with the riot shotgun. By this point, you should be using Magnum ammo or Coin Shot ammo, both of which are statistically identical, with a minus 2 to DT and a 1.3 times damage mole. The only difference being that the Magnum eats up more of your gun's condition. A great option when using the right ammo in Shotgun Surgeon, you'll be powering through endgame content pretty confidently with the right build if you use the right shotgun. Finally, for heavy weapons, I'm going to go ahead and count the K9K and the SMMG out completely and only really have the Fido and Avenger as viable weapons. However, I will basically asterisk the entire heavy weapons category by labeling them as honorable mention. I've tried using automatic guns so much and in the face of other builds, it really just doesn't get the job done like a medicine stick or a shining light in darkness with plus P or hand load. For the life of me, I, I, just, I just can't confidently justify using them over other options that synergize with crit better. I think they're good, there's just too many scenarios where they don't get the job done with high armor or high HP targets. And that's gonna be everything. So now let's assign the best gun to each stage of the game and finally a best gun overall. For the early game, it's close between this machine or that gun, fittingly with the names, 
but I'm gonna have to go with that gun. It's consistency, fast reload, easy grab, incredibly accessible ammo, high crit mole. I think it's the most solid option for guns in the early game. Not weapons, but guns. Weapons is another point of discussion. By no means will that gun rule the early game, but it'll be one of your best assets for sure. If by some chance you happen to have a ton of 308, I'd put this machine above it, but for most purposes, I think that that gun is just better. For the mid game, it's a tie between Christine Sniper and a light in Shining Darkness, but if you held an engraved 9mm pistol to my head, I would have to go with Christine Sniper. Its utility and the high base damage is simply too good to deny, and by now you should have a ton of 308 on hand. When you use Christine Sniper, you'll find yourself wiping out crews of bad dudes with that sweet, sweet Vault Boy mark at the top of your screen pretty often. For the late game, things start to get pretty tough to narrow down. They really do. But I think if I had to make a judgment call for killing power, it's a tie between the AM rifle and the light in Shining Darkness. Light is a better active combat gun than the AM rifle, and the AM rifle is a better opening gun than light. So I think combined, they cover each other's weaknesses and synergize for a great one-two punch. Explosive ammo sneak attack critical opening just murders absolutely everything. And for the alerted enemies running at you, high crit with handload 45 will just clean up every time you proc the text at the top left side of your screen. For utility, the riot shotgun is undeniably the best for just spamming down dudes with beanbag ammo and making the game an absolute joke. But for killing, light and AM rifle are where it's at. Riot shotgun, I'll give an honorable mention. And with that, that finishes my assessment of the guns in New Vegas. I didn't cover every single gun, that may be for another video, but I just wanted to go over the most critical information. If you have a recommendation for what type of gun you want to see next, or to tell me my opinion is dog shit, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I'm not going to waste your time. That'll be all for me. Peace.